Hey guys, welcome to Redeeming Date Night. We have another day with an amazing speaker coming to us. Her name is Helen Terry, and she is well-versed in the NIA technique. She's been teaching this technique since 1993, is that right? That's right, yeah. For a very long time, and I hear that you are very uh, well-known in your profession. <laughs> <laughs> So we are, we are overjoyed to have you. And um, guys, we are in for a treat today because Helen is going to be taking us through some exercises to talk about the brain and how important it is for us to be having movement and within our bodies and how important laughter is in our marriages and all these things. And as you all know, I put together date nights for married couples. And in those date nights, I have these elements that she's going to teach and talk to us about where there's things that are fun to do that make us laugh that get us out to new places and helen's going to explain to us why all of that is important for us to have in our in our marriages and in our any relationships really to be able to create new dynamics to build new memories and um i'm really excited that you're joining us oh thank you so, yeah. So, um, do you want to tell us just a little bit about yourself first and what is the Nia technique? Cause I, I'm not actually super familiar with it either. I know the result of what it's doing, but I don't know specifically what is the Nia technique. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I do realize when I start to talk, I have to explain to people as shortly as I can that I'm English and I've been living in Texas for over 25 years. So my accent is a mixture between London and Texan which is when people listen to me, they think I'm from Australia. So, okay. around the world. so um, I just um, think it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So, um, so you were asking me about who I am and then your question was about what near is. Yeah. 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 Can you just explain yeah. to everyone what that, what that is? Yeah, so the near technique is something that's been around since 1983, and it was designed by a couple called Debbie Rosas and Carlos Rosas. And it's a fabulous holistic movement program, which I really prefer to say is the lifestyle. And it draws from the wisdom of martial arts, dance arts, and healing arts into what can be a fabulous hour workout. Um, but it also is more than that. It works the mind and the emotions and, and individual spirit expression as well as movement. And, and so that's one of the main things that I teach. Um, and then uh, Denise Medved, who was mm -hmm. one of the first ever trainers of Nia Technique, she created a program that complements Nia Technique called Ageless Grace. And that's the program that specifically addresses neuroplasticity um, of the brain. So I actually mm -hmm. teach both of these programs. So, and, and so clarifying today, um, it's lovely to talk about near and encourage people to dance and get out of their comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. And then Asian's Grace is the one that specifically we're going to be talking about that helps the brain with neuroplasticity. Great. And then you also um, had shared with me earlier just your desire to start incorporating some of this stuff into your Christian faith and with worship and dance and things like that, being able to like praise and yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's funny with my story is that I, um, I actually got married. I went to a conference. I stumbled into a workshop about Nia and this was mm -hmm. 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I was what I call an angry atheist at that time. Okay. And I walked into that session and I literally saw light and I knew that this was my path. And uh, so I came into Nia completely um, you know, void of faith and, and really in a bad place. Wow. And through the movement and through this lifestyle, um, I would say it, it led me to Christ. And so once I then found my faith, um, which was literally 20, 22 years ago, I've had these two paths, you know, my faith, which is so important to me, mm -hmm. and then also my fitness profession. And I've been praying and having this desire of how can I bring these two together? Yeah. So, um, when I found Nia, I was here as a visitor in the US. I went home, talked to my boyfriend, and we got married the next Tuesday. So basically, <laughs> I got married to stay in the country to go do the Nia technique. Ah. Um, so um, 
and so then it was like then I got pregnant and it was like we have a child and it's like wow um I really am in relationship with this person so wow. I kind of have a unique way where my husband and I we've been married for 25 years but we actually he said well I'll marry if you like if it will help you and that's actually why we got married but then when our daughter came into the world and also when I found Mia and also then when I became a Christian, it's all those things mm -hmm. came together and I realized how this relationship is very important and it's kind of like a plant, you know, it needs nurturing mm -hmm. and time. And the thing is we are each different every day and when we make assumptions that that other person's always going to be the same. It, it's, it, that's simply, I think, a lie. I think we're all changing every day. Yeah. And so it's important to have ways of reconnecting. And, yeah. yeah. You guys have such a beautiful story. And I love that because you're, it's such a portrait of commitment. And you didn't realize that going into it. But I mean, a lot of, a lot of marriages can probably echo that too, yes. where, for one reason or another, you know, they just jumped in and now are finding themselves like disconnected or, but I mean, you guys have just grown in your connection. And what I hear you saying is your work, this work is part of how you've done that and been able to stay so connected yes. and committed. And so I just wanted to acknowledge you for that and to encourage anybody that's listening that these techniques and this having time together that's intentional that's purposeful with your bodies with your minds with your words that God wants us to love us with all those portions right our heart soul mind our strength everything mm -hmm. and so what you're doing and what I'm doing gives married couples that opportunity to really grow in their commitment and connection yes and I love what you said there in that that commitment for me really is the foundation yeah. Um, so Joe and I said, hey, we'll get married. If it works out, great. And if not, he's done me a favor so I can stay in the country. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's really yeah. that yeah. Was the foundation of our marriage, which really yeah. is not a foundation. Yeah. Um, but then through finding Christ and having a daughter and making the choice of I'm yeah. in this is, for me, the foundation is the commitment. It's you're yeah. stuck with me. You know, so our foundation is you're stuck with me and, <laughs> and that we, you know, move through how to work things out. Um, but it doesn't have to be all serious. You know, for me, it's like from that foundation, you're stuck with me. And it's like, well, so we might as well have fun with each other, you know, yes. and how can we keep rekindle all those things that, that we love when we met each other, when we were still in that yeah. infatuation and everything was peachy and wonderful. It's like, for me, it's always wanting to recreate that to be able to see the beauty in the other person and how we can grow together rather than grow apart which is so important I think sometimes the loneliest people on the planet can be married couples yeah know, if we don't keep that connection and the good yeah. news is with God is no matter how yeah. far we come to become separated no matter how far it might be rocky is that we can always you know through God find ways to get back together and something like your program yes. with dating i think it's that perfect his oh, new thing to do you know Thank you. Yeah. i think it's a wonderful idea i really oh. think you're doing a wonderful thing here thank you i'm equally as passionate about seeing marriages connected oh. and growing so okay so with that said um you've prepared a couple of techniques right that you want to teach to us Exactly. So this is Ageless Grace, which was developed by Denise Medved. So it's a like an offshoot from Nia technique. It's still using this body's way concept of how we can move in a way systemically to use the brain and the body. But what Denise Medved has done is it's looking at how we have five main areas in the brain. And we want to do fun activities that actually work all the different five areas. So we're going to be moving physically. We're going to use a little bit of memory. We're going to use a little bit of strategic planning. We've got to like problem solve on the fly. And these are all things that the idea when we're doing this is that you'll actually get to the point that you feel, I call it out of balance, maybe feel a little bit inadequate. But what I like is there's a parallel here with relationships. Yes, that if we think we've got it all together, you know, then we're not really human. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's better to put ourselves in situations where we feel a little like, I can't quite do this. 
And what happens in those moments is we're squeezing the brain. We're creating one of these great new buzzwords called neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. By making the brain do new things, we are having all these different parts of the brain have to communicate, figure out, problem solve. And by doing that, we create what we call new neuron pathways. Mm -hmm. And new neuron pathways is like it's a new day. It's a new life. You know, and the brain, you know, when we were children and we were playing and having joy with new activities, we're actually firing the same parts of the brain and using that kind of chemistry, which can also make us feel happier and more alive. So with yeah. that said, are you ready for one of the 21 tools of Ageless Grace? I am so ready. We are all so ready. <laughs> okay. So anyone can do this. It's best to do it sitting in a chair. And if you can have your feet firmly in contact with the floor, that's great. Um, and all we're going to do, this one is called gentle geometry. And you don't have to be good at math to do this. Okay. First of all, start with one hand, take your finger, and see if you can simply draw a triangle. Okay. Lovely. Drawing the triangle, feeling those three sides. And smiling is definitely optional, but encouraged with this, yeah? So you've got your triangle going and you can be sensing your feet. Now take your other hand and see if you can start to draw a horizontal line. And keep that triangle going. So you're exercising your sense of humor muscle as well, laughing at the body. Everybody, everybody watching better be doing this as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's really entertaining in a restaurant. You can get all the people like, what are they doing? Yeah. And kids love this too. Seniors love it. And then if you really, once you find that's going well, you can always like add a little knee circle you know, or a nose circle. Three things is like a juggler. Yeah, doing three things. And then relax. Okay. Now, whenever you've done it one way with the brain, we want to do it the other way as well, which can be even more challenging and more funny. So let's do it with the other hand. Start your triangle. You can go either way, but see if you can keep going the direction you start. Looks so good. Exactly. Now keep those three lines going. Take your other hand and draw a horizontal line. So when you're doing gentle geometry, the three main <laughs> shapes to play with is a triangle, a straight line, and circles and you can oh, okay. do it anyway yeah okay. so at home you could maybe play with speed doing one slower and one faster or doing it the other way and going around and it's very similar to that you know tapping your head and circling your belly but from doing that how how do you feel like can you notice any anything in your mind or in your body i feel um I just feel lighter from smiling and laughing, <laughs> you know, just totally whatever I was thinking or feeling is, has shifted. And, um, yeah, I just feel lighter. I yeah. think from the smiling and from the, I feel like my brain just got to work out. <laughs> exactly. Well, your brain did get a workout. Yeah. And also we know like, um, one of the movement forms, um, from the near technique called Aikido, uh, the philosophy is energy follows attention. And I think we can apply that to this activity, but also like in relations, like energy follows attention. So to do this and do this, and maybe also think about doing circles, you didn't have any room in your brain for thinking about anything else. No, yeah. You see what I mean? And so in that moment, you're forcing the brain to focus and energy follows that attention. And I think it really also applies to what you're wanting to do in relationships. In that for me, for me personally receiving, and then also when I'm with someone else, I think the greatest gift we can give each other is presence, mm -hmm. to truly be present to the other person. And that requires that our brain has the ability to sustain focus. It's not only like keep eye contact. I, I can look at you and I can be like thinking of my shopping list or I can be yeah. thinking of something else, you know, it's like, yeah. True presence is paying attention to the other first person and really being here. And, um, and for me, you know, like with my techniques of near technique and ageless grace, you know, we learn how to pay attention to the body through sensation. We learn how to help the brain to focus through doing these mind things. Yeah. But I think there's also a connection with God. Like I think true relationships can only succeed 
Well, I could say I would say the optimal way for a relationship to be working is when both of us are allowing God to work through us. Yeah. And then take it another step further. If I really want God to be working through me in my life, mm -hmm. the optimal way for me to allow God to be coming through me is through presence. So when I am giving presence to the other person that I'm in, right in front of, yeah. that is the optimal moment when I am here, I'm not with anyone else, past or future, and I'm here, then that is when God is able to best work through me in whichever relationship I'm with. You know, so for me, that's how presence, which can come from focusing the brain, actually allows God to work through and hopefully help our relationships flourish. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And, and getting in our bodies with it too is like really how we can, the experience is also what's shifting the things in our brains. It's not just like the presence is a huge part of it, but then it's also being active in your presence. Like you said, not thinking about something else. Yeah. Like your fear and your engaging. That's yeah. huge. And that's hard for, you know, it's, it's in our society. It's like, we're oftentimes there, but we're not present. That's so true. You know, or we're present, but we're not engaged. <laughs> I mean, when we were born, the way we came into the world and we learned about the world was through 100% like physical sensation. If you think about an infant, an yeah. infant learns through touch, through tactile, mm -hmm. through all the five senses. And then what happens is, as we become a walking human, we come separate from what was given to us as an infant, mm -hmm. but that's actually the innate way that we were designed to be. And it is hard, but that doesn't mean it's difficult to actually be more present. So like, for example, right mm -hmm. now in this moment, as we talk, it's like, can you pay attention to the sensation of your feet touching the floor? And mm -hmm. You see, and so when you choose with your brain, so like these brain exercises we can do can help us be able to focus on that. If I want to be in this vessel that God has provided me with, yeah. the way to be in this vessel, this earth suit, yeah, is mm -hmm. through sensation. And if we start at the base by sensing our feet, that if I'm in sensing one part of my body, every moment I am truly present in my body, in my vessel, which means I can be more present and more grounded to the other person. Then once I got my feet going, it's like, can you sense your, your bottom, your seat where you're yes. sitting in the chair? And in fact, sometimes that will shift up. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, oh, I'm living in a body. Oh yes, this <laughs> thing is with me, yeah. So sensing my feet. And then once I've got that, sensing my, my bottom in contact with mm -hmm. the seat. And then seeing if I can have those two sensations going. And then finally, for me, it's like um, I might sense my hands if I've got my hands on my lap um, or if I'm having the meal, I might sense um, the weight or the temperature of the silverware in my hands. Um, or really when I'm eating, not only doing like you know, chewing before I swallow, but really sensing the flavor. And this is then connecting with the smell, the taste, the sounds, like the things that you're doing monthly with the date night. I mean, you're, you're creating the whole ambience. And um, for us to keep that aliveness in our relationship, I think those, the five senses are so important, but it begins with sensation and that thing of just sensing your feet and sensing your seat. Um, simple things. It does, and then practicing that, it's like a fitness program. Just do a little bit and then you'll probably forget about it. But then you'll come back and you can train, can I sustain that attention longer? Can I sustain more than one body part to two parts, like increasing the intensity? Yeah. And in a couple of weeks, it can really help you be engaged and physically connected with your body, which also, you know, in your relationship with your spouse is to be physically connected with them. Yeah. If you're more of an agent in sensation, then um, you have more effectiveness there as well. Cool. <laughs> so do we get, do we get another technique? Do we get enough experience? Another one? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So let's go with, there's one called juicy joints was just like moving all the joints. I thought that would be fun. Um, 
However, the one for me that really works the brain, like gentle geometry, okay. is body math. Okay. okay. Body math. So we're going to start off with, um, let me maybe move back a little bit so you can see my thighs here. We're going to begin with simply tapping one thigh. Okay. Exactly. And see if you can be in rhythm with me. Good. Then tap the other thigh on its own. We start off simple, yeah? See if we can do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tap for eight, counting on one thigh and then count to eight with the other thigh. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I know there's a little lag when we're doing the video, so I've never thought about this. is going to be like really curious when you're in person with the person, it might be a little easier. But then, one person in the couple, um, we play this game. So, I'm going to decide that we're going to do a clap on the six. So, then we're going to do it together. So, we're going to do on the thigh one, two, three, four, five. Then, we're going to clap on the six and then see if we can do seven, eight on the thigh. Then we're gonna to go to the other thigh and do the same thing. And remember, the whole thing is, when we mess up, mm -hmm. rather than thinking we did it wrong, when we mess up, that's when we should celebrate. Oh, I'm creating new neuron pathways, and I'm creating my sense of human muscle. So it's like, it's okay when we like, go like this, and that's actually the purpose of this exercise. Are you ready? Yeah. So here we go. We're going to thigh on all the numbers other than six and see if we can count out loud. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. Now the other hand. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll My caffeine is like, <laughs> I'm like, this is not crazy. Yeah. And the perfect thing is that you stayed in, like you didn't bail, you smiled, you kept counting and you were laughing. And, and that's part of doing these brain body exercises is that we can feel off, we can feel inadequate, but we just keep going. And again, for me, there's such a parallel there with this silly little game with relationships that really matter. You know, sometimes we're off, you know, and sometimes we feel like we want to pull away. Yeah. But that are the times when we want to really find that binding agent that's going to help our relationship be stronger is when we feel we want to pull away, that that's the time that we actually say, no, you're stuck with me. I'm going to stay engaged. And it's the same with the body. No. You know, this is a little off, but we're going to see if we can smile. We can see if we can stay engaged um, and keep an eye on the prize. And that is to have a flourishing relationship, you know. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain to us a little bit more, like, the importance and the value of why, like, getting into your body is so valuable in terms of what is shifting in the brain? Absolutely. So, um, well, so first of all, it, you kind of tapped on it earlier of saying, you know, for us, it, you know, it can be so difficult to sustain focus. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, yeah, like the body with the brain, it's use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. And um, studies have now shown that the idea of if I do a crossword every day or if I do Sudoku every day that I'm keeping my brain active, yeah. that's actually scientifically been proven. That's not true. We have to engage and use every single part of the brain. And it's like my body. I mean, if I just work out an arm, my, my, my bicep, I'm, I'm not going to have a healthy body. If I want a healthy body, I got to move the whole body and I have different systems in my body. I've got cardiovascular, I've got strength, I've got flexibility. I have to use all these different components of being a healthy body. Well, it's the same with the brain. So I need to be doing activities that activate my memory, my strategic planning, and also motor learning. It can't only be in my brain. 
there needs to be this brain to body connection. Yeah. When we don't do that, we think we're so smart, but then also our brain thinks it's so smart. So our brain will say, oh, hold on. I'll take care of that from my, like my database, from my previous experiences. So what the brain does, it starts using only one part of the brain, that part of the brain that you know, has thinks it's got things figured out. You see, the thing is, every day we're changing. Every day life is changing. Every day the person I'm in relationship, it's all changing. In fact, in life, the only thing that's constant is change. So when we rely on that part of the brain that's making an assumption, oh, I've got this, it's all the same. And we can be that in life here yeah, as well. Like, oh, we think it's always going to be the same. And that is not true. Yeah. So what happens is by doing these body brain activities there's actually 21 tools in ageless grace and what D denise has created is every single possible combination of these five areas of the brain get fired through these simple tools and it's been shown that 10 day 10 days 10 minutes a day is all you need to do for your brain activity health Wow. And you can exactly 10 minutes a day. So it's not, it's not like an hour workout. And also you don't need to actually go to the gym to do this. And we encourage you to be doing it in a chair and all the movements are using your arms and your core and your legs in contact with the floor. But you simply need to have a body, have a chair and have the willingness to flex your sense of humor muscle. <laughs> as well as use your brain. And so what we're doing is we're breaking that habit of assumption. We're breaking that thing in the brain that thinks we've got it all figured out. Because the reality is, is none of us have ever got it figured yeah. out. That's by being human, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're literally, we have to every day work all five parts of the brain. Yeah, yeah. I love that you said, how did you say it? You break the story of assumption or you break the is that what you said yes yeah yeah, yeah. that's powerful and that um you know that every day for only 10 minutes I was thinking of that scripture where God says like you never know what a day is going to bring yeah when you're married and you're united to somebody else you really don't know what another day is going to bring because you don't know what that person's going to bring you don't know what their world around them and their day is going to bring you don't you know mm. there's all these dynamics but I love that, like, this is actually something that couples could do together. Right? Yes. And sit in a chair and, you know, have this time and do these techniques and laugh together. Mm -hmm. And it's a time of connection and it's a time of, you know, even communication and it's a time to not be doing everything right and to be okay with it, like you said. And it's like, it's really not threatening too because you're not, it's not like you're doing something, um, you know, that's, uh, I don't know, gonna, you're not, you're not, you're, when you met, when you not mess up, but when you're not, you know, getting it right, or you're getting off, it's not negatively impacting something in your life. We're often like, so it's good practice to be able to be like, oh, I did that wrong, but like step back in, like you were saying. Yeah. Because oftentimes we'll like, something will go wrong or be off that's, impacting our life and then it's like oh how do I pick up the pieces from here Lord or how do I get back on track with my spouse we had this fight or I didn't you know take out the trash whatever it is but like practicing these things daily will help our teach our brain yeah that it's okay that you're gonna get off track and then mm -hmm. you just get right back on track exactly and what yeah and, and it is really showing like in ageless grace, I mean, it's also in life, like we'll have moments where we'll feel out of balance or, or things don't go our way yeah. or we don't feel like, you know, it's just not going right. And we have a choice in that moment. I mean, every moment we have choice, yeah. And the choice in that moment is that I can be like, oh, I messed up or quite often they messed up, you know, we'll blame it on the other person, you know, it's like you know, I messed up or, or they messed up or there's a problem or this yeah. isn't working. Mm -hmm. 
whereas and with the movement it can be like oh I, I didn't do it right this isn't working or I can choose to smile and say the truth of the matter is now I'm creating new neuron pathways mm -hmm. I mean literally like every time I mess up it's like hey cool I'm learning oh, I, I'm, you know yeah and another way I look at it too is um when things rub me up the wrong way or when I'm in, you know, with Joe or another person, you know, whatever's happening in any of these relationships, you know, particularly with my husband is I have the image of, um, that God presents me with heavenly sandpaper. So when I'm in a moment in my relationship where, where it's abrasive or it's just not going my way, rather than contracting and saying, God, this is messed up again, or like, da, 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 you know, that place I can get into. Yeah. Um, instead, is to say, thank you, God. You know, this is heavenly sandpaper. It's here to smooth my, my rough edges. You know? And uh, a phrase that again and again helps me is, relationships are God's gift to self-awareness. You know, and, and so then I can step away directly from the, maybe the, you know, that friction that I might be in with my husband and realize from a moment, it's like, what is it here for me to learn about myself? You know, and again, it's like whenever I'm getting negative or saying it's about the other person or thinking it's messing up or thinking it's not working out, all those moments, I have a choice to turn it around. And with God's power, I can say, hey, thanks, you know, um, there's something here about me. What can I bring to this relationship to help it grow? You know? Yeah, I love that heavenly sandpaper. <laughs> I'm never going to forget that. Oh, <laughs> well, watching nice. remembers that too. <laughs> well, this was amazing, and I'm really grateful that we had you. It's um, it kind of just simplifies the tough moments, you know, like just hearing you speak and getting in our bodies with the exercises, really realizing that when things aren't working or not going well and um, that it's really just an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for a new, to build a new, a new, you know, neural pathway in your brain. It's literally an opportunity to create a new moment and to walk in a new way, you know, to step out of like, okay, I'm in my flesh right now and to step into walking in the spirit. So what does that look like? You know, how do we do that with our bodies? And yeah. I love that. And you know, something that might be helpful if people really are interested in, in the little ages grace things I showed you, um, yeah. they actually have created a little pack of cards that have the 21 tools. And so it's like a game that you can like shuffle the cards yeah. and then you can pick the card and on the card it has the name. It gives you some suggestions on how to do it. And it also tells you what areas of the brain that you're using. Um, so it, it makes it, you know, like a game. And there's also that spontaneity that you don't have to prepare anything. Um, and it's, it's, you know, on the fly, figuring out how to do it. And, you know, it's just a pack of cards that can fit in your pocket or in your purse. So um, I think that's a, a very practical way um, to be doing the program. Yeah. Yeah. So can they um, go buy those on agelessgrace.com? Yes. On agelessgrace.com. Um, I'd highly recommend the cards are fabulous. And then there's a book. There's also a DVD. And, and there's some videos you can find there that also will give you more of an idea of how to practice it at home. But the encouragement in the end is that to just do a practice 10 minutes a day, you know. Okay. Yeah. I love that. And it's a great date idea too. Get those, yes. and then you can have little mini dates at home every day doing your brain workout. And and as a couple, do the benefit of doing this together too is that you know if you are sitting in a chair and you're look you're facing each other. Yes. And that's also it's like it's cr literally creating in your brain. God's using that moment to create a new connection and a new moment with your spouse. That's you know, full of humor, full of joy, um, okay with error, you know, like it's literally yeah. bringing these elements. So yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic idea for a little, yeah. day, little daily 10 minute date. Yeah. <laughs> and the incentive too is like, I think most of us know, have at least, you know, 
have a parent or a family member or know someone who has of age has had mental decline. You know, when you look at, you know, people that I think most people as we age, if we're given the choice of do we want to lose our mind or lose, you know, health in our body, it's, yeah. most of us have a fear of as we age, you know, like um, dementia, um, you know, yeah. having, l losing the quotes, losing our marbles, you know, losing yeah. our function. And how great that this can help us in our relationship, in our marriage. Yeah. And it can help us, you know, really focus on each other. It can help, but it's long term. Yeah. This is the best preventative way so that as we age, we don't have, you know, we don't have to be worried about that aspect. We can literally yeah. be man mentally healthy as we age. And that is not only a gift to us and our spouse, that is a gift to our children. Yeah. I was just thinking as you were saying that, I'm going to get the cards and do it with my kids. This will be a yeah. very engaging. Oh, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. For my daughter, it definitely helped. When my daughter got stressed with tests and with studying, we'd have just like a little, like literally a one minute ageless grace break. You know, we'd get away, but we'd get away from the schoolwork. We'd actually move away from the desk and come sit on the couch. And we would just, she, her gentle geometry, I think was her favorite. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it would just give her a break, a focus, and her brain would almost help her brain like reset. Yeah. You know? And then she could go back and do more of her homework and she was more focused, less stressed. The memory was improved. You know, she used it when she was, you know, cramming in for tests and stuff. There's a whole Ageless Grace for Kids program, which is really, really cool. Oh, yeah. wow. That's cool. Well, I, we are going to wrap it up. Is there any like last minute nugget or a word of encouragement that you want to give to the people watching today? Um, I mean, I feel like you've given us so much already. <laughs> yeah. Or would you like to share with us about um, what you and your husband, Joe, are doing at your Soma retreat? Center? Well, I'd like all three of those things. So, yeah, so, um, particularly when the going gets tough in a relationship, I, I, I would say, I would, I would say if you're in a long-term relationship, which hopefully a marriage is, yeah. um, don't wait for problems to arrive. Instead, it's expect problems, prepare for problems, literally talk in advance on the good days for having strategies in the bad times. And when the bad times come, truly celebrate in that even though you might feel like you don't know where you're going and maybe it's really, really difficult to stay in, celebrate it. Every time you get through that, you are stronger as a person and you're stronger in your faith and you're stronger in your relationship. And then your relationship ripples out as an inspiration to others. Yeah. So that then leads me into, so that's the main thing with, with the marriage thing. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Joe and I have a beautiful ranch. It's called Soma Ranch. Soma means healthy body in Greek. And we see the body as being the vessel for the mind, emotion, and the spirit. So the main thing I provide is the NIA teacher training programs. We also do Ageless Grace training programs there. And when we're not doing that, we do retreats. So just get away retreats, yoga retreats, meditation retreats. And a big dream I have is to be doing intimate um, couple retreats, like to have eight couples to come together and for us to do work to help people in their marriages through through the movement through getting together and and getting together with like-minded couples we're all going in the same direction you know wanting relationships to flourish and really for God to be able to work through us individually but also as a couple and uh, so for you know for Joe and I that's what we are wanting to create we feel we've been blessed with Soma Ranch and um and from that, we want to really be helping other people. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to um, brainstorming and networking with you on that last oh. time with the couple. So. <laughs> 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 I've already been thinking about things. And I just, yeah, I mean, if anybody's interested in attending, you know, a retreat like that, feel free to comment below and or send an email to myself or yeah. Ellen and um yeah 
So yeah, I mean, it's like we're so easy to get to, and that we're within an hour from Houston. Mm -hmm. It's a 15-acre ranch. We got rescued donkeys and horses, an Olympic lap pool, sauna, hot tub, a beautiful dance studio, and and then there's so many pockets of places where people can retreat, and there's enough space. Yeah. And nature, getting out in nature and going to a new environment where there's beauty, it, all of those things can be inspiring. So, yeah, yeah, I'd love for something like that to happen. So, And then um, one thing that you were going to give to everybody for free today, you want to talk about that, your tips for graceful aging? Yes, yeah. Um, so hopefully people that are here, you can see the, the subscription, the link that you can go to. And that's a gift from um, Denise Medford at Ageless Grace that'll give you some fabulous tips about what we've been talking about today. Yeah, great. Well, Helen, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You have just downloaded like amazing wisdom and just you're such a beautiful godly example to me and I am really grateful to be in your life now. So. Oh. Well, thank you. You're such a blessing to me and so many people. So thank you for doing this. I think it's amazing value and you're helping transform marriages and lives. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us today um, for Redeeming Date Night. And again, my heart and Helen's heart too is I love how much you echoed things for me today too. And you're so behind what I'm doing. Um, but my heart is really to be able to redeem date nights and marriages so that, like Helen said, even before the tough times come, um, that the foundation is strong mm -hmm. and that when the tough times come, that you can still, even in those times, be coming together and connecting through those okay. moments and past those moments and that marriages would be strengthened, to be a blessing to our world and to our work. So thanks for joining us today. Bye, guys. Bye, Helen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs>